Hey, um, welcome uh, to the channel. Please make sure you like and subscribe if uh, you enjoy what you see. So this is going to be a video about uh, GraphQL, the View Composition API, using Apollo Composable. Um, one of the challenges you usually have when working with uh, GraphQL is setting up a database. Uh, when I was poking around, I found this cool utility called um, JSON GraphQL Server. So the first part of this video is going to be about getting it set up and installed and running. First thing you need to do is install the um, NPM library. All the links are down below in the notes. Um, so after the NPM library is installed, the next thing you do is set up this file called db.js. Um, this file is going to have a JSON representation of all of your data that you want to work with in um, your GraphQL database. Um, so just create the file. I'm pasting in the default code from the uh, library that I'm going to use for my project. It has a couple of relationships, some posts and users and some comments. Um, after you get it all set up, the next thing you have to do is you just go to the root directory of your project and um, you type the uh, run command, which is JSON GraphQL server DB. Oh, looks like I messed up. Um, I have the database file in the wrong location, so let me move it. Make sure you have the file in the root of your project directory, and then let's um, run it again and see what we get. Uh, so here we're running it. GraphQL server is up and running. If you click the link, it will launch the uh, server for you. And you can see it already has uh, the GraphEQL integrated in it, so you can play around with your data. You can see that it's already defined all my queries. Uh, my mutations and I can uh, actually do a test run of one of them to make sure that everything's working properly. Um, it has the IntelliSense for you to type ahead, identify the queries that you want to run and just run them. It's just a simple run to um, get all the posts that exist inside the database at the point at this point and return some information on them. So this is pretty much how you get the database set up. And so the next step, we're actually going to get the uh, main JS configured properly. Part of that is making sure you have the right uh, libraries installed. I've already pre-installed them to save us some time here. So um, now I'm inside of my main JS, and the first thing I want to do is start to uh, load in the necessary libraries to get GraphQL and the Apollo Composables functioning properly. I'm just going to paste these guys in so you don't have to sit here and watch me type all this stuff out. Okay, so we'll start with uh, first all the GraphQL stuff. Every, the View Composition API, which clearly we need to get the composables to work. Um, the provide comes along with that so we can uh, provide access to the composables in our components. Default component is part of composables, and then you need the base Apollo client, which is what GraphQL um, depends on to uh, function properly. Okay, now. Um, the next set of imports is the actual client. So we're going to load in the Apollo client. Um, I have dev tools hanging on there so I can see what's going on my dev tools. And then that um, URL with the port is what we got back from when we started up the GraphQL server um, using JSON GraphQL server. Uh, finally, since we're still in the older version of Vue, we have to use the Composition API plugin. And then uh, last but not least, we need to um, add in the provide so that we can get access to the Apollo client and the default Apollo client from inside the app. We're going to just fire up my uh, CLI command to get my server running to make sure everything is working properly and it looks like everything is good to go. So now the next step will be to move over to um, the hello world component and start to add in the uh, queries and mutations to support. Um, the GraphQL. Let's start by adding the essential imports that we need for the composable and for Apollo to work. Next we're going to add our GraphQL query which will query all of our posts from our uh, database. The query shaped similar to what we saw early on when I was playing with the uh, server. Next we will actually add the um, use query um, composable to um, the setup section of my component. You can see it returns results, loading, and the actual error. Um, these values will get passed on and bound to the component. Um, so that's how we're going to be able to kind of use them uh, in the UI. Uh, next up, 
let's start to add the um, code to necessary template. So as I said, I get an error back, I get a loading back, and I get the actual data back, um, all of which I'm going to be able to use to uh, give a pretty decent UI. And what we're going to do is, based on the specific status of each one of those, we're going to um, determine what's rendered. So if loading, I'm going to render just a loading statement. If I have an error, I'm going to render the error. And then last but not least, if I actually get some results in the um, all post response, then we're just going to loop through um, and do a JSON string of fire, basically just dump the raw data that actually exists for that record. And using the for loop, we'll use the ID from um, the post um, as the key, and that should be all we need to get this guy uh, running properly. So just kind of do some formatting, and yep, all right, it's all formatted. Let's remove that mutation because I don't need it. Uh, everything's running fine. Um, let's not write. Uh, well, it looks like I need to actually, oh, that's spelled wrong, results. There we go. Now we're actually getting the two posts that were in the database originally. We can hop into the tools here and we can see that we're getting some data. I'll figure out what those errors are a little bit later. Um, but the important thing is that my queries are working and I'm getting data back. So. It's time to move on to the next phase of the project. We're going to start by adding mutation. If you notice a jump, I, I removed some, some content just to kind of speed this up. But here's the mutation. Use mutation um, proposal we're using. It's going to return us a loading uh, and an error just like the um, add query. But let's get our query in here. Um, once again, I'm not really going with the GraphQL language, so I'm just going to paste in the um, query for you. You can check the links below to kind of talk about how the uh, query language is structured. Uh, but um, queries in, so now we need to make sure that we, oh no, let's paste a query in. Um, query set up, we're getting some errors because things aren't right, but we'll go through and clean them all up now. We add the query to the uh, use mutation. Um, so now we're going to use mutation, we're going to use the add post query. Uh, we have our loading our error and the mutation, uh, the name of the function uh, that we're going to use. But since we're using loading and uh, error for the uh, use query, we need to actually kind of name what we want it to be for the mutation. And so we're going to kind of uh, use this nomenclature of m underscore for loading m underscore error. And then what we'll do is we'll check and we'll see um, whichever one has a value, that'll be what gets passed back to the component. Uh, next up, we oh yeah yeah we get we we definitely want to make sure we return the uh, create post uh, mutation uh, to be bound to the component and you'll see how we use that later. Let's add the uh, use mutation to my import. My compile is working, and it looks like everything's set up properly for uh, using my mutation. Now let's uh, add the code to get the required input for the mutation. So we're going to add a, a div at the top, and we're going to have it add an input for the title of the post, and then a button which we will click, which will activate the function. Uh, okay, so now let's just clean it up by formatting the, it. And now you can see that we are... Let's add the function um, down inside the data section of the component. So we need to set a title as a uh, reactive uh, pro property, which we're going to bind to the input component using vModel. Uh, next, we add the method that will get called when the user clicks on the button to uh, get us to the point where we get the bound value. And we're going to be able to pass that bound value as a parameter back to the uh, component. Hmm. OK. The error was that I appeared to name my um, mutation should be called mutate on this use mutation uh, composable. So that's why I'm getting the error. So now that the error is resolved, um, let's see. Oh, okay, no more error. Let's get back to the code. Okay, where were we? We were cleaning up the add post. So this is the click handler for when the user clicks the button, um, how we're going to add the post. We are going to create our own random ID, which will be date based on the time. It's useful in this demo um, to serve our purposes. The other property that we need is we need a user ID 
to associate the post to. We will just create a user with ID 200. I think that user exists. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to call the mutation, which got bound to our component uh, from the uh, use mutation composable. And that mutation requires the query parameters, which is the title, um, the ID, and the user ID, which we're going to pass all of those back. Um, when we call this function, this function will trigger the mutation, which is in the composable, and everything should work wonderfully. Okay, so let's see. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? Um, there's my create post that got bound. Um, there's my use mutation set up as a composable to create post that gets called. Now let's try one. Our first new item. Okay, now what you notice is that you cannot see the item here. But if we refresh, you can see the item. And so that's because the item's getting added, but the cache, the local cache that uh, um, GraphQL is using is not getting updated. So that's the last thing that we're going to do here, is we're going to put the code in to have the cache get updated locally so that you can actually see the result without having to go and do another query. So the use mutation composable has a, another property on it called update, and it's what you can do to update the local, local cache. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to use that function, and we are going to take advantage of the cache that's provided to us. So you get two things. You get the cache, and then you get access to uh, the mutation data that you just uh, provided. So we're going to get the cache, read all the data values that are currently in the cache, and then add our value onto the cache. So that's pretty much what the process is for updating a local cache anytime you do a mutation. Um, according to the documentation, the use mutation will do an update automatically, so you don't need to perform that. So if it scans the cache and finds an object with the same ID as you as you are mutating, it will update that object. So here you go. We are reading the cache using the query, the all post query to get everything back. Then once we get the uh, data object back, you remember on the data object, uh, we need to get data object dot all posts, and we will get um, data object dot all posts, and then since it's just a basic array, we'll just push the new data onto the end of the array, and we as you remember it's in the create post pro uh, property, I mean sorry parameter, and now let's format. Yeah, we did everything, so we no, nope, we got it. We pushed it on the end, and then the last thing that we need to actually do is write it back into the cache so that the cache will get updated and we should be able to see our results um, in the UI. So that you do your cache write query, you pass it. So interesting, you call the same query again. So you call the all post query, and then you pass the all post query to data that you wanted to put in. So then now everything should be set. Let's clean it up. I love my format. Let's run it. Let's add an item and see what we get. Add item with cache. Item gets added and updated automatically, which will be expected. And then the next one gets added. Oh, what is the error? Um, it doesn't like my user ID. And I believe it's because there is no user that maps to that user ID, so when it's trying to resolve it, it's failing. So what we'll do is we'll just go and add an ID that we know is a valid user. I run it again, and we get no errors. And let's add one more item to the end. Okay, looks like it's working. So that's good, and this is the wrap of this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to add delete, and we're going to add update, and um, then we're going to clean up the UI a bit using the Ionic Framework components. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, and take care. And please make sure to like and subscribe if you really found this video helpful.